Tonight, live from the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, you're invited to the 26th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Join these actors as they honor the year's greatest performances in film and television. Getting the party started with Tatinger Champagne is Carrie Elways from Stranger Things and Vita Lee Tatinger. And now, join us for the 26th celebration of the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Hi, I got my SAG card in 1976. It was for an indie film. I don't remember what it was, but it was the 70s and everyone was really, really high. <laughs> I am Christina Applegate and I am an actor. I had my first foray in the local nativity play. I was uh, in the coveted role as the shepherd. Everyone lauded my performance. I was hooked. I was five years old. My name is Cynthia Arrivo and I'm an actor. I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, which was the uh, Pittsburgh of the North, <laughs> big steel town, and the most popular actor to come out of my hometown was the guy who did all those toilet paper commercials years ago, the guy who played Mr. Whipple. Mr. Whipple worked in a supermarket, and every time he saw a customer squeeze the toilet paper to see how soft it was, it would infuriate him. And he would glare at these people and say, don't squeeze the shark, man. <laughs> and I used, I, used to, I, used to, that, I used to laugh at that. And I dreamt that maybe one day, I could be the next Mr. Whipple. <laughs> My name is Eugene Levy, and another thought just occurred to me. <laughs> yeah, when I was 10, back in the mid-50s, I, I was a big Sid Caesar fan, and I would do my best to transcribe the script from one of his comedy sketches that I was watching on television, in real time, of course, because in those days, we didn't have a VCR machine uh, to record and play it back. There was no pause button you could hit and then write it down. I was scribbling as I went there. And, 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 and I would take that script, and me and a few of my buddies who had no show business aspirations whatsoever, Dad. We would, we would get together and perform the sketch, and it was always a pale version of what the original was, because we weren't, we weren't professionals. Yeah, but. Sure, what are you doing? I'm doing my How I Became an Actor speech. I see. Well, you've taken three times as long as everybody else, and you're still not finished. My story's complex. Okay. Well, <laughs> you've used up so much time, they're telling us they had to cut Tom Hanks, so. Well, that's, that's all right. I know Tom. He's a good guy. He'll take it well. That was the Mr. Whipple look. Okay. Can right. you just read the line so we can start the show? All right, fine. Okay, okay. I need the music. <laughs> My name is Eugene Levy, and I am an actor. And let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, nominated for cast in an ensemble comedy tonight, Eugene and Dan Levy. This is intense. Welcome, everybody, to the 26th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. The SAG Awards. And for this incredibly glamorous group of people tonight, SAG is such an unfortunate acronym. Uh, and just to clarify one thing right off the top, yes. Daniel and I are not your hosts tonight. No. We're here to greet you and get things started. Mm -hmm. And there are two key things that differentiate us from actual hosts. That's true. Uh, number one, we will not be reappearing throughout the show. And two, we aren't being paid. That's also true. Uh, <laughs> although SAG actually offered me an internship credit and a free flu shot, so. Oh, that's wonderful, yes, son. Yes, very generous. Good. Yeah. yeah. Now tonight, actors, 
celebrate the craft of acting and get to push their talent to the limit by playing good losers. That's true. So look out for those performances tonight because some of them might be recognized at next year's SAG Awards. And speaking of compelling performances, Mr. Robert De Niro is receiving the Life Achievement Award this evening. Very, very exciting and so well-deserved. Yes. And I've never met Mr. De Niro, but this award tonight is particularly meaningful to me because I see a lot of De Niro in my own work, and uh, I, yes, practically the same guy. Well, I wouldn't say that exactly, okay. but uh, we both have gifts. Let's sure. put it that way. <laughs> so now we have the honor of presenting the first award of the evening. That is true, very exciting. Male actor in a comedy series. <laughs> Male actor in a comedy series. Yes. And, and how awkward would this be for you if I was nominated and you had to announce someone else as the winner? Yeah. That would be very awkward, but yeah. fortunately for me, you're not nominated. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Dodged a bullet on that one, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, the actors who are nominated in this category are truly at the top of their game. In fact, no male actors on television have ever been funnier than these nominees. They have shown a mastery over the art of comedy. They have tap danced on our funny bones in ways that no other male comedic actor has ever done before. Yeah. They are legends. They are personal role models of mine. I, look I think up they to get the, it. Okay. I think they get it. Sure. I think they get it. They're all. They're all. They're all funny. Okay. Here are the nominees for outstanding male actor in a comedy series. Alan Arkin, The Kaminsky Method. Marty, get a job, any job. Your very life depends upon it. <laughs> well, I just had a checkup, and my doctor said uh, I was in good shape. Well, Dr. Norman says you're on the way out. Michael Douglas, The Kominsky Method. Now that is a little tougher. Why? She got a glimpse of who you really are. You can't do that with women. Trust me, it's never good. Bill Hader, Barry. Oh, we both look like assholes. No, yeah, we look the silly. Same. No, we're, we're the not same. same. What are you doing? doing? <gasps> See, no, stop, stop it. it. No, Baz. we sound the same. No, we don't, don't sound the same. No, we sound totally the same. Can you stop? Stop. No, we sound the same. It's all awesome. Awesome. That's... Andrew Scott, Fleabag. Are you a cool person? Oh, I'm a pretty normal person. A normal person? Yeah, a normal person. What makes you a normal person? Well, I don't believe in God. <laughs> I love it when he does that. Tony Shalhoub, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I learned this about comedians. They say funny words for cheap laughs. Guys, please. If you had a penis, she'd be talking about you, not me. Oh. Wouldn't you talk about your mother's penis if she had one? <laughs> and the actor goes to... Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub celebrates his fourth win in this category. He's also nominated tonight with the ensemble of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Well, thanks. I've been a proud member of this extraordinary union for several decades now. And uh, for that, I am most grateful. I share this actor with my fellow Maisel castmates. It is, uh, it is a joy to know you. It is a privilege to work alongside you. And so uh, with your blessings, uh, I will dedicate this to uh, one of our family who we lost this year and who we miss terribly, the most marvelous, Brian Tarantino. 
our brother. Here's to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Millie Bobby Brown and Jarrell Jerome. George Bernard Shaw said, if you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh or they will kill you. No pressure. Fortunately, the nominees in this category have nothing to worry about. With every truth, observation, and revelation, they definitely make us laugh. Here are the nominees for female actor in a comedy series. Christina Applegate, dead to me. And so what? So she, she smashed up a car. You know what, sometimes you just snap. <gasps> okay, wow. How dare you? Alex Borstein, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. What time is it? I don't know, 7.30, 8. Holy shit, it's after midnight. We've been here six straight hours? Guess so. I just realized I really gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, me too. Rachel Brosnahan, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's so big, Daddy. Wait. What? Is this pornography? It's not pornography. It sounds like pornography. It's not pornography. Keep going from the last line. It's so big, Daddy. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara, Shit's Creek. So I took a Bosnian upper just to keep awake. Those things are the size of a nickel. So I only took one. At least I think I did. I may have taken the second one just to be safe because I don't know if I took that first one or not. <laughs> Phoebe Waller Bridge, flea bag. Hell is everything. We wish it wasn't, so we could actually think about something else occasionally, but it is. It's the difference between a good day and a bad day. Some people are exploited for it, and it pays your bills. Hair is everything. And the actor goes to? Phoebe, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Waller Phoebe Waller-Bridge celebrates her first win. She's also nominated tonight, the Ensemble of Fleabag. spontaneous in these speeches but I don't trust myself not to be bleeped out again this time and so I've written something down um, first of all I want to say a massive massive thank you to um, my agents at UTA and Hatton McEwen Penford and uh, Alec uh, Drysdale uh, Independent and my amazing uh, team with PJ Shapiro and Cara Christine and Jenny and Alexis at Shelter who've just brought me all along this journey and kept me so calm and been a real um, also fun party crowd at the same time um, but this is what I really wanted to say um, the Fleabag team go home tomorrow back to the UK, except for Brett, who you get to keep. Lucky things. Um, but I have to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being so supportive of our show on these shores. Uh, with all the chaos of the outfits and the interviews and the six pack that my makeup artist drew on me this evening. And, uh, <laughs> The, uh, and all the kind of pre-drinks and after parties and all the amazing Hollywoody things that happen here, it's quite easy to be distracted from the thing that has actually happened to us. And uh, at some point it will all hit me and I'll just go into a corner and have a good old cry about it. Uh, but tonight, we as a Fleabag gang from the UK will soak this up and celebrate and spend this evening uh, with all of you amazing actors in a room I never imagined I would ever be in. So thank you. Um, I... Uh, this whole thing really has been a dream, and if I wake up tomorrow and discover it was just that, then thank you. It's been the most beautiful dream. <laughs> and now, Margaret Qualley, Bruce Dern, and Dakota Fanning. Uh, <clears throat> Tonight's first nominee for cast in a motion picture is a love letter to actors and to movie making. 
made by, uh, incidentally, probably the biggest movie lover of all time. And I might add, the man can make a movie, Mr. Quentin Tarantino. Set in 1969 Los Angeles, it is the story of the enduring friendship between an actor and his stunt double, as they face what just might be the end of their trail in a world and an industry that are rapidly changing. For everyone who loves the magic of the movies, this is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm Rick Dalton. That's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. That guy? Sounds like a good friend. I tried. <laughs> I'm Sharon Tate. I'm in the movie. In this town. That can all change like that. Hey! You're Rick Dalton. Don't you forget it. Please welcome Jason Bateman. Hi. Five hilarious shows, five incredibly talented groups of actors. Sometimes the biggest star of a show is the entire cast. Here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by an Ensemble in a Comedy Series. The Ensemble of Barry. Mr. Cousineau, you could use this class as therapy. Thank you. Next. When you create a character, you lend him your unique self, and then you let everything out. Action. Don't be an idiot. I thought you were amazing. You really went somewhere. The ensemble of Fleabag. Do you want to know what gift I'm giving your father? Oh, God. It's a portrait. Oh, God. Of you girls. Oh, God. Um, you mean together or? Um, um, I don't need a couple of sittings. Right, can't use photos? No, because the lighting's never good enough. And if you're not very photogenic, then it does you no favors. <laughs> The Ensemble of the Kaminsky Method. Sweetheart, you just have to give it time and a little trust. My mother and I had nothing but trust. You don't understand because you didn't have to go through this. Get over it. You only have two women in your life and you managed to chase them both the way. Why do I bother talking to you? Who else you got? Here. The Ensemble of the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Where the hell have you been? She's been out doing whatever it is she does at night. Oh, and I suppose that's my fault, too. You know what I'm doing at night. If you hadn't met me, then I wouldn't be Miriam's mother, and she wouldn't be turning to prostitution instead of being married. I am not a prostitute. I'm a comic. Is there a difference? Yes. Prostitutes get paid more. Hilarious. You should go into comedy. The Ensemble of Schitt's Creek. David, keep your glove up. Protect your face. Hey, Johnny, no coaching. Always be ready. Johnny, why don't you just put on a little apron and serve them the win on a silver platter? I'm just helping out my son, Roland. The kid has no idea what he's doing. I can hear you. All right, the actor goes to the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. This is the second win in a row for the 13-actor ensemble of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. for Fleabag, this is really weird. <laughs> this makes no sense. I don't know what to say. I'm gonna take this home and make sweet love to it through my Spanx hole. Anyone else got anything to say? Yes, Come on, get up there, baby. Honestly, this, is, this makes no sense. Fleabag is brilliant. You guys are brilliant. We you are, are brilliant. Very, very, very surprised. I didn't vote for Rachel. I didn't vote for Tony. I forgot to vote. <laughs> this makes no sense. Uh, we, wow. I can't use somebody else fucking. 
We just want to say, um, obviously, this is a huge ensemble. We are so proud to be a part of. This ensemble extends far beyond those that you see on this stage. We are missing, as Tony said, one really, really important mem member of our ensemble tonight, Brian Tarantina. Um, we had such an amazing time here with him last year, so thank you so, so much for this. Uh, this is dedicated to him. Thank you to our casting directors, Jeannie, Meredith, Cindy, for bringing us all together. Thank you, guys. This is a mistake, but thank you. <laughs> Coming up, Taryn Edgerton, the cast of Parasite, and Jennifer Garner on the Screen Actors Guild Awards. So my first film role was in the movie of Brighton Beach Memoirs. I played a pool tough number one. That's game. The job was simply to look like I was a pool hustler. I had to light a cigarette and then say the line. I lit the match. It went out before it ever got to the cigarette, but I played it as if I had a lit cigarette. It's your break. Take one is actually the one in the movie, which would mean that Something absolutely ungodly bad happened in take two. I'd like to say that I'm Jason Alexander. I'm not a smoker, but I am an actor. I have the wrong end of my mouth. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Taryn Edgerton. Although their roles couldn't be more distinct, the actors who play them share one thing in common, the ability to portray imperfect people to perfection. Here are the nominees for outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role. Laura Dern, Marriage Story. I don't want to get better. Isn't that Tom Petty who said the waiting is the hardest part? Ugh. I don't know. I represented his wife in their divorce. I got her half of that song. Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit. You know when it happens. You'll feel it. It's a pain. My ass, I bet. In your tummy. Like, like you're full of butterflies. Yuck. Yeah, yuck. Nicole Kidman, Bombshell. Can you just sure. Listen. I can get you where you want to be. I can protect you. Just don't get ahead of yourself. You have a lot to learn. I can teach you. Jennifer Lopez, Hustlers. What are you going to do? Go back to minimum wage? Oh, baby, this game is rigged. And it does not reward people who play by the rules. Yeah, they gotta stand in the corner or get in the ring. Marco Robbie, bombshell. It would have been nice if, if somebody told us that he's after more than legs. It's nobody's job to protect you, Kayla. That's all of our job. Uh, and the actor goes to Laura Dern, Marriage Story. Laura Dern celebrates her first win. She's also nominated tonight at the Ensemble of Big Little Lies. because I got to hug my dad. <sighs> Thank you, Screen Actors Guild. Thank you, actors. What an incredible uh, room to be in, um, to be in celebration of all these extraordinary performances of my fellow nominees and all of you, and acknowledged by our peers. I thank Netflix, the amazing Ted, Scott, everyone, that team, my champions, Peter, Jason, Charlie, Annette, all that guide me. I want to thank our Marriage Story family, our leader, our hero, Noah Baumbach, 
our incredible cast, to Adam and Scarlett and the two partners-in-law. I would love to share this with the extraordinary Alan Alda and Ray Liotta. <laughs> to casting directors, Francine and Doug, to all casting directors who somehow have found us, discovered us. <laughs> Namely, Lynn Stallmaster for telling me to study and try this. And to all you actors, I literally, literally would not be here if it weren't for actors. So thank you, Bruce Stern and Diane Ladd. <laughs> And thank you for raising me in the community of your friends on your movies, doing your plays, and getting to know the wealth of these extraordinary people. And for my grandma, Mary, raising me and my best friend, Belina, on daily television reruns, and the partnerships, and the voices, and people I watched and loved forever, Lucille Ball, Vivian Vance, Mary Tyler Moore, and uh, you know, all these amazing artists, Red Fox, Freddie Prinz, everyone we got to grow up with that made us want to do this. Thank you all, and I'm staring at my also Big Little Lies family. We get to love each other and work together. We are the most blessed people in the world. Thank you so much. So much love. I love you, Dad. Please welcome Sung Kang Ho, Park So Tam, Chi Ushi, Lee Jung Un, and Lee Sung Kyun. Kisangchungiranyongwanungwlekomediwasililaijakangyokanmetapoimida.한지붕아래에서벌어지는계급간의갈등을보여주지만몇몇은그갈등의존재조차의식하지못합니다.영화를보다보면어느인물의편을들어
told you before, we tried everything to help him. You know that. You tried. He brought this on himself. Brad Pitt, once upon a time in Hollywood. Look, Brad, I'm coming in there. With my own two eyes, I'm gonna get a good look at George. And this ain't stopping me. And the actor goes to Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is Brad Pitt's second win and ninth nomination. He previously received an actor with the cast of Inglorious Bastards. He is also nominated tonight with the cast of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I gotta add this to my Tinder profile. <laughs> Thank you, my brothers, my sisters. This means so much, um, more than I can possibly fathom. Uh, I want you to know I watch everything. I watch you all, and the work has been mesmerizing, so I thank you. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank my co-stars, uh, Leo, Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie's feet, Margaret Qualley's feet, Dakota Fanning's feet. Seriously, Quentin has separated more women from their shoes than the TSA. Gotcha. Now, we all know what we do is a team sport, and we elevate each other. And I got to work with some amazing, amazing people. Uh, Mr. Pacino, Mr. Dern, uh, Kurt Russell, Leo, Dakota, um, um, Tim. Uh, uh, wait, where are you guys? Miss Butters, um, a bunch of the new generation, Margaret Qualley, uh, uh, Austin Butler. Anyway, you all, you all elevated my game. I, I certainly hope I did the same for you. Um, Let's be honest, it was a difficult part. A guy who gets high, takes his shirt off, and doesn't get on with his wife. <laughs> it's a big stretch. It's big. <laughs> Listen, I love our communities. I love our communities so much. Um, it's been amazing to me. Each, I've met so many amazing people along the way. Each of us in this room, you know, we know pain, we know loneliness, we bring that to the screen. We know moments of grace, we've had moments of wisdom, we bring that to the screen. We've all had a laugh at our ridiculousness, and we know funny, and we bring that to the screen. And goddamn, I think that's a worthy endeavor. Uh, um, I've been banging away at this thing for 30 years. I, I, I think the simple math is some projects work and some don't, and there's no reason to belabor either one. Just get on to the next and keep telling stories. Thank you for this. My love and respect. Enjoy the evening, because tomorrow it's back to work. When the Screen Actors Guild Awards return, Scarlett Johansson, Sophie Turner, and Pedro Pascal. Plus, David Diggs and America Ferreira. This is an actor's resume. On my early resumes, I said that I play flute. As a special skill, I did not forget to put swimming. Swimming? And I don't even know where your hands go because one of these twists one way and one twists Okay, we're just going in, guys, okay. Also, waving. I can wave. I'm Yvette Nicole Brown. I will never play Lizzo in the biopic, and I'm an actor. Swimming, fencing, stage combat, all at the same time. It's right here. Hey! I'm Adam Scott, and I'm an actor. <laughs> and now, Sophie Turner and Pedro Pascal.
As actors, we aspire to transform ourselves into our characters, and in doing so, to transport the viewer to worlds very different from our own. Tonight, we honor performers who are supremely successful in that endeavor. Here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Television Movie or Limited Series. Patricia Arquette, The Act. Oh, sweet pea. I know sometimes you want to be like everybody else. But you know what? <laughs> I like you special. Tony Collette, unbelievable. Everyone knows huge correlation between violence at home and violence against strangers. And even so, a third of wife-beating cops in Florida are still walking around with a badge and a gun. Joey King, The Act. I'm pretty sure that she made it up. And I've been going along with it, and we fooled a lot of people. And they're all gonna be so mad if I ever, ever tell them. Emily Watson, Chernobyl. I spoke to dozens of people. Every word they said, I wrote down. All in these books. These are the ones who are still alive. These are the ones who are dead. They died rescuing each other. Michelle Williams, Fosse Verdon. But you know damn well if I get this song, it'll be my show and not yours. And you can't stand the thought of it, can you? You just can't stand the fact that I'm the star, not you. And the actor goes to Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams, a seven-time nominee, celebrates her first win for her role as Gwen Burden in Fosse Burden. Um, thank you so much for this. Um, <clears throat> when I was 12, in between extra work and um, the occasional infomercial, I mystifyingly had the good fortune to be in a movie with Sir Ben Kingsley, and he said something to me that I, I still think about. He said, I don't like to act. It's very lonely. I like to react. And I know I've felt that loneliness, and we've all felt that loneliness. Sometimes you're in a scene and you're doing a monologue, or sometimes you're in a scene with somebody else, but you feel like you're doing a monologue, <laughs> or sometimes you're acting with someone and their ego, which is very lonely, and sometimes you're acting with a dog, <laughs> and sometimes you get so damn lucky that you find yourself opposite Sam Rockwell. Sam, I found Gwen by looking at Bob. There he was, looking back at me, always telling me the truth and in exquisite detail. I could believe that I was Gwen because I knew that you were Bob. Um, incidentally, I, I got to work with Sir Ben one more time 15 years later and I was playing a ghost and he asked me how that was going for me and he remarked on the inherent loneliness of the character, and he said that he himself would never play a ghost again because it's very difficult for an actor. You never know where on earth you're coming from or where the hell you're going to. <laughs> and I, I never felt like that, thanks to the inside of Nicole Fossey, uh, the constancy of our crew, our writers, our dance team, our music team, and uh, Jackie Rosado and Nicole Bridgeford, who did my hair and makeup. Uh, Tommy, like everything else in our life, I share this with you. And Matilda, it's one thing to be completely honest as an actor, it's another thing to be completely honest as a human being, and that's just who you are and how you live, and you teach me just by being you. So I love you and I'm coming home. Thank you. And now, please welcome the president of SAG-AFTRA, Gabrielle Carteris. Ah. Oh. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the SAG-AFTRA Awards. I am really humbled to be a part of this community that does so much for so many, and so many remarkable things for so many people. I want to start by thanking People Magazine for hosting tonight's gala, as well as Stand Up to Cancer, a division 
Yes, a division of the Entertainment Industry Foundation for generously supporting the sag after Foundation's catastrophic health fund. I also want to thank our sister unions, let us not forget them, who make tonight possible. The DGA, the WGA, AFM, IATSE, and the Teamsters, all, all who stand beside us in unity and solidarity. You know, we are living in a time of incredible change and challenge. Tonight, as we lift our eyes to the larger world around us, we must recognize as a community and a country how important it is to listen to each other and to speak our truths not only in our stories, but in our lives. Those truths are laid bare in the extraordinary work we celebrate tonight, the work that shows us what we can become. We are SAG-AFTRA. We are actors, we are broadcasters, and sound recording artists. And to paraphrase the German writer Bertolt Arbach, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. It's true. Art is magic. Art is power. And the magic and power of what we do together can and will shape a better future. I am Gabrielle Carteris, and I am an actor. Thank you. Please welcome Gwendolyn Christie. The notion of what a screen hero looks like, thankfully, has broadened in recent years. There are superheroes, of course, but there are many others too whose heroism reveals itself more subtly through empathy, resilience, or quiet acts of courage. The actors who play today's heroes are often everyday heroes themselves, summoning the courage and moral purpose to lend their voice to a cause they believe in and advocating for the future of the planet and its people. We may not all be as heroic as Black Panther, Wonder Woman, or even Greta Thunberg, but each of us in our own way can play the role of hero for others in our work and in our lives as actors, recording artists and broadcasters, activists, parents, partners, and friends. consider yourself a hero. And now, please welcome Taika Waititi, Roman Griffin Davis, and Scarlett Johansson.
set in wartime Berlin, the next nominee for cast in a motion picture is an anti-hate satire that shows us the absurd brutality of fascism. The film tells the story of a 10-year-old boy whose beliefs are challenged by his own growing life experience. Yes, you did it. Um, well, it's a tragedy, a comedy. It's a coming, what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's a coming of age story and it's a warning. <laughs> this is Jojo Rabbit. Today your boys will be involved in such activities as war games, <laughs> ambush techniques, and I'm blowing stuff up. I don't think I can do this. Of course you can. Ten year olds shouldn't be celebrating war and talking politics. <laughs> Your mother took me in. She's kind. You two seem to be getting on well. She doesn't seem like a bad person. You're not a Nazi, Jojo. You're a ten-year-old kid who wants to be part of a club. And now, America Ferreira and David Diggs. David and I are here to present an award to one of five brilliant actresses on one of four compelling television shows. Which collectively represent 92 hours of binge watching. Probably not all at once. Speak for yourself. My bad. Uh, here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Drama Series. Jennifer Aniston, The Morning Show. We are doing this my way. Because frankly, I've let you bozos handle this long enough. Helena Bonham Carter, The Crown. But we didn't share duties, you just went to a dinner party. In your place. And represented crown and country with, I think we can agree, favorable results. Olivia Coleman, The Crown. Behind palace gates, we are perfectly normal people. No, ma'am. You are not normal. Aren't we? We wake up in the morning, go to bed at night, we work, get tired, get colds. We have uncles that embarrass us. Christmas is to endure. We are perfectly normal. Jodie Comer, Killing Eve. I buy what I want. I don't want it. I do what I like. I don't... I don't like it. I'm just so bored. Elizabeth Moss, The Handmaid's Tale. I'm gonna get out as many children as I can. I don't really know how yet, but... I swear to you, I'm gonna get them out. And the actor goes to Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston. Aniston. <laughs> This is Jennifer Aniston's second win and 11th nomination. She received her first actor with the Ensemble of Friends. What? Oh my gosh. This is so unbelievable. What a room, you know. I was thinking back to when I was a, a little girl and I would, um, I didn't have a VCR, but I had a tape recorder and I would tape Laverne and Shirley, Happy Days, and uh, on my little tape deck and I would listen to these episodes in my head and I would just think, I'm gonna one day, I'm gonna do that. I really know I'm gonna get out of this house. It's another story. And I'm gonna be on there. I'm gonna be that. And then I got a Bob's Big Boy commercial and I got into SAG. And that's, that was a, hum we were a humble beginnings, but you have to start somewhere. So I just have to say, I'm so grateful. First of all, Carrie Aaron, our extraordinary head writer, who created these, not just one, but so many characters 
that are so layered and complicated and messy and ugly and just beautifully human. And boy, did we get to dive deep into our own experiences and our own history and really be able to breathe life into these extraordinary characters. And I mean, who knew that emotional breakdowns felt that good? Um, it, was, it was literally like, you know, seven months of therapy covered about 20 years of work. So thank you for watching that. Um, and just every actor in this room, um, uh, uh, Mimi Leader, our fearless leader, Michael Ellenberg, Reese Witherspoon, where are you, my partner in crime? I love you, girl. It took 20 years, but we did it, finally. And um, my producing partner, Kristen Hahn, Amanda Anka, Kristen, Top of the Hill, Laura Canyon, dreams do come true, honey. Um, and all of you, your performances inspire me for years. I feel like we've kind of grown up together, and I'm just, I know that, you know, the few times I've been invited back into this room over the last 20-something years, it, it's been so special, the times that I've, I've been invited, and to be up here is, Truly an honor. Thank you. Oh, Adam Sandler, your performance is extraordinary and your magic is real, buddy. I love you. When we return, Leonardo DiCaprio presents the Life Achievement Award to Robert De Niro. And later, Glenn Close, Steve Buscemi, and Tom Hanks on the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Well, here we go, guys. We're rolling. Hey, Mark. Just to set the scene, I'm about eight years old in uh, my backyard in Edwardsville, Illinois, and I had no clue of what being an actor performer was at all. Are you guys sure this looks okay? Yeah, a little to the right for us. Okay, okay, okay great. But I decided to put on a record that was called When the Red Red Robin Comes Bob Bob Bobbing Along. Everybody else wearing this? All right. There'll be no more sobbing when he keeps singing his old sweet song. Lori Metcalf? Okay, all right. My name is Laurie Metcalf, and I am an actor who can swing in time to music. Hi, I'm Max Greenfield, and I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Leonardo DiCaprio. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's an absolute honor to join you here tonight and pay tribute to an exceptional artist. The role of an actor is to make us feel, they take us to new places, using their skills to guide us towards a deeper understanding of humanity. And for almost 50 years, Robert De Niro's performances have done exactly that. He has astounded us with his portrayals of heroes and villains, loners and leaders, dreamers and sociopaths. His characters have echoed through our culture in iconic films like Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, The Deer Hunter, Cape Fear, The King of Comedy, Heat, Jackie Brown, Goodfellas, Casino, not to mention his seminal Oscar-winning work in The Godfather Part II and the unforgettable Raging Bull. These are just a handful of the varied and refined colors Bob has used in his acting canvas over the years, but when I think of this extraordinary actor, one thing comes to mind. Robert De Niro is elemental. It feels as if he's always been here and always will be here. Like so many of you here tonight, he was the actor I watched as a young man obsessed with films. At 13 years old, my father took me out to the movies one afternoon to see Midnight Run. And as the lights went down, he turned to me and said, if you really want to be an actor and get into this profession, if you want to understand what great acting is, you watch that man on screen. Little did I know I had have the opportunity a couple of years later to audition for my first starring role alongside Mr. Robert De Niro in This Boy's Life. To share scenes with an artist of his magnitude was monumental. It was a life-changing experience. His commitment to character, his specificity in detail, and his fearless pursuit of authenticity in his work have influenced not only myself, but entire generations. His collaborations with Martin Scorsese, inarguably the greatest partnership in cinema history, have given us career-long explorations of the human condition.
Beginning with Mean Streets and through their latest masterpiece, The Irishman, they have single-handedly defined and elevated an entire genre. I've learned so much from the both of them. I'm fortunate to call them collaborators, Bob since This Boy's Life and Marty since Gangs of New York. And after 30 years to work alongside Bob again in Martin Scorsese's upcoming drama, Killers of the Flower Moon, is a true honor. <laughs> Off screen, Bob is a fervent champion of our acting union and has dedicated uh, his humanitarian causes. Bob's work with AMFAR, FilmMade International, and other groups show that the arts make our principles and our politics even stronger. He has used his voice to urge us all as citizens to use our vital constitutional power to vote. Tonight, with deep gratitude, we celebrate the life's work of Mr. Robert De Niro. Well, I know Olivier, if we fought Sugar Ray, he would say that the thing ain't the ring, it's the play. So give me a stage where his bull here can rage, and though I can fight, I'd much rather recite. That's entertainment. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Somebody messes with me. Where? I'm gonna mess with him. Never ran on your friends. And always keep your mouth shut. You ever kill anybody? I hurt somebody's feelings once. I'm sorry you're hurt. I'm not hurt. I asked you if you were hurt, and you said, yeah, I'm hurt. That's because you, you made me say. You started to put words in my mouth. Jack, you're a grown man. You have control over your own words. You're goddamn right I do. So here come two words for you. Shut the I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Just give me a number now, and I'll remember. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. You don't hear the word no very often, do you? I hear it all the time, only it's more like, no, please, no, no. I shot him. What? You shot Melanie? Twice. What? That's what I said. No, that's what I said. No, that's what I said. I will be watching you. Hiya, Frank. This is Jimmy Hoffa. I heard you paint houses. Yes, sir, I, I do. I also do my own carpentry. You want to play games? Hey! How do you feel now? Hey! Big shot! Come on. Come on. Give me an excuse. A couple of rules, though. No cursing. No off-color material. We'll do a clean show, OK? And with the power vested me by the kingdom of God, I sent you to the land, son of hell! Making his television debut, the new oh, king man. of comedy. Oh, list of everything you want now and then plan on spending the next 25 years of your life getting it slowly piece by piece if life reaches out with a moment like this it's a sin if you don't reach back and it'll haunt you the rest of your days like a curse he's a prophet and a pusher partly truth partly fiction walking contradiction you saying that about me well, who else would i be talking about take much strength to pull a trigger, but try and get up every morning, day after day, and work for a living. Let's see him try that. Then we'll see who's the real tough guy, the working man is the tough guy. I came into this game for the action, the excitement. It's that or we both better go do something else, pal. I don't know how to do anything else. Neither do I. I don't much want to either. Neither do I. I was just making pictures. It is my great honor to present the Screen Actors Guild the Life Achievement Award to an artist whose personal and professional mission has revolved around our acting community his entire life. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Robert De Niro. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. For those, those generous, generous words, thank you. As actors, we don't take victory laps. We're too worried about what our next job will be. Uh, so it makes me very happy to know that my next job is working with you and Marty. <laughs> At least I know I've got another year of health insurance. <laughs> I've been puzzling over what to say to express my appreciation for this award tonight. But more than that, for being a part of this community of actors, for being able to have a career with dignity and creative fulfillment. We, as actors, don't do it all alone. We can't do it alone. We depend on each other for a collaboration in our work and support and fellowship, both on screen and off. And for that, I am so grateful. I thank SAG-AFTRA for tireless, tirelessly fighting on our behalf for wor workplace and economic gains and respect, and that especially bear. <laughs> and that especially bears remembering these days when there's so much hostility towards unions. Political leaders who support unions are more likely to support Affordable Care Act, equitable taxes, humane immigration regulations, a safe environment, a diverse citizenry, reproductive rights, sensible gun control, and fair wages and benefits. We owe them our support, and we owe them our vote. I can imagine some of you are saying, all right, all right, let's not get into the politics and all that stuff. All right. But we're, we're in such a dire situation, so deeply concerning to me and to so many others, I have to say something. And I thought I said it pretty well to Variety the other day, so I'm going to quote myself. <laughs> there's right and there's wrong, and there's common sense, and there's abuse of power. And as a citizen, I have as much right as anybody, an actor, an athlete, a musician, anybody else, to voice my opinion. And if I have a bigger voice because of my situation, I'm going to use it whenever I see a blatant abuse of power. And that's all I'm going to say about that tonight. <laughs> so I'm so happy to share this with so many friends here tonight. My dear friends, Julie and Barry, Fiona and Art, Maryam and Josh, Jane, Stan, my beautiful son, Julian, all my beautiful sons and daughters watching at home, the whole Netflix Irishman crew, and especially my SAG after brothers and sisters. I will treasure this Life Achievement Award because it comes from you my comrades in arms, my fellow actors, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. When the Screen Actors Guild Awards continues, Anna Paquin, Ray Romano, and Harvey Cartel. Plus, Lily Reinhardt, Caitlin Deaver, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and more. Please welcome Steve Buscemi. How do you do, fellow actors? <laughs> Television shows are many things, great entertainment, welcome diversions, and loyal companions. Our favorite programs become familiar friends, showing up at the same time each week, or in the case of streaming series, showing up on a Friday night and sticking around all weekend, maybe into Monday. So let's take a look at some old pals who recently ended their run. 
Don't worry, they're not going anywhere. Whenever we need them, they're only as far, far away as our queues and watch lists. I will be president or I will be nothing. President or nothing? Yeah. You were going to leave without saying goodbye? I'm sorry, dude. I, we say goodbye a million times. I, I didn't know how to do this one. What? Bazinga. Hi, I'm Jane. Boom. Your life is over. Yeah. I possess the DNA of Leonard Nimoy. They have to meet our rigorous standards. I mean, look at the three we've already hired. Stallions. Each one more magnificent than the last. All I need is a healthy ovum, and I can grow my own Leonard Nimoy. That's what I do. I drink, and I know things. Pink means pregnant. But I've never had sex. Immaculata. Oh, my god. Just no matter what I do with my hair, it just keeps falling in this really chic way. Oh, God. At your age, I'm surprised that you can even make it through a meeting that long without having to pee. Okay, why do you always have to go straight to the prostate? Because you light a fire inside me. So we're not getting married. No. But we're not breaking up. No. So what are we going to do? If we both die and you never find out that I still love you, what, do I win a prize or something? Sorry, what? You know nothing, Jon Snow. I don't just hack you, Krista. I hack everyone. Sir? Thanks. I'll get in in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, Lily Reinhardt and Caitlin Deaver. <laughs> the actors in this category stir up some intense feelings in the viewer. Love, hate, anger, sadness, and surprise, to name a few. They toy with our emotions, but we just keep on coming back for more. Here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Drama Series. Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us. This is your M.O. So please, please do not self-protect by putting this that on me. That is not what I'm doing! The hell it's not. I refuse to be blamed for the fact that you had your awakening 20 years too late. Steve Carell, The Morning Show. It's my whole life, my legacy. You can't ask me to not fight for that. I can't, and I am. I'm asking, I'm asking. Well, no. Billy Crudup, The Morning Show. We already have the housewives watching TMS. If we want to win the ratings war, we need the women who aren't watching, the ones that don't see themselves reflected in Ice Queen Alex. So. Be messy. Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones. We are advisors to the Queen. Worrying about her state of mind is our job. We still have to take King's Landing. Maybe Cersei will win and kill us all. That would solve our problems. David Harbour, Stranger Things. But right now, I need you safe. This thing is after you. It's not after me. Do you understand? And the actor goes to... Peter Dinklage. A six-time nominee in this category. This is Peter Dinklage's first win. He's also nominated tonight with the ensemble of Game of Thrones. Hello. 
Hello. Um, oh my, I think he was on Game of Thrones. Um, I would like to thank the people of Northern Ireland who put up with, are you from there? Who uh, put up with us for nine years. And then I would also like to thank everybody at table nine and 10 and beyond over there. Um, Cause we put up with each other for nine years. And finally, and most importantly, I'd like to thank my wife who put up with me for more than nine years, but lived in a place far away from home but made it home because we were together. Thank you. Please welcome Anna Paquin, Ray Romano, and Harvey Keitel. I'm uh, particularly proud to be here to present The Irishman on behalf of the entire ensemble cast. Adapted from the book I Heard You Paint Houses and brilliantly directed by Martin Scorsese, this nominee for Cast in a Motion Picture chronicles the life of hitman Frank Sheeran through five turbulent decades and the disappearance of union boss Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, I just want to say that if, if you told me that someday I would get to play a mob lawyer opposite, opposite De Niro, Pacino, and Harvey Keitel, no, I wouldn't, I still can't believe it. We can't believe it either, Ray. That's not, that's not up there. It is now. Nominated for four SAG Awards, this is The Irishman. I want you to meet my cousin, Russell Buffalino. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you. It was like the army. You followed orders. You did the right thing. You got rewarded. There was nobody in this country who didn't know who Jimmy Hoffa was. Would you like to be a part of history? Yes, I would. Big business and the government are working together, trying to pull us apart. Something's got to be done. I know things they don't know I know. It's going to happen. Either way, he's going. And now, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. We all know how much actors like to get dramatic on their own. But to achieve it all together as a company elevates a story to new heights. These ensembles are the most electric and generous on television right now. Here are the nominees for outstanding performance by an ensemble in a drama series. The Ensemble of Big Little Lies. Yeah, but they'd have to prove we were lying. They, they probably can. What if they can? I'm just telling you this because we have to be prepared. <sighs> Look, we have to stick together. That's the only way we've gotten this far. If we stick together, we'll be fine. We're gonna be fine. The ensemble of the crown. Elder sister, younger sister, number one and number two. Who's number one? You. She knows it too. Yes, I think she does. If I may offer two pieces of advice, never turn your back on true love. And the second? Watch out for your family. They mean well. No, they don't. The ensemble of Game of Thrones. The dragon should give us an edge in the field. If they're in the field, they're not protecting Bran. We need to be near him. Not too near or the Night King won't come. But close enough to pursue him when he does. Dragonfire will stop him. I don't know. No one's ever tried. The ensemble of The Handmaid's Tale. Do you recognize anybody? It's impossible to tell. 
You're starting to smell. Looks like the same batch from yesterday. And the day before. Maybe they're done. With Martha's. Who's next? The Ensemble of Stranger Things. But instead of like screws and metal, the Mind Flayer made its weapon with melted people. Yes, exactly. Yeah, OK, uh, yeah, I'm just making sure. Are we sure this thing is still out there, still alive? That would beat the shit out of it, but yeah, it's still alive. But if we close the gate again. Cut the brain off from the body. And kill it, theoretically. And the actor goes to The Crown. The 12-actor ensemble of The Crown celebrates its first win and third nomination. here and you know obviously winning doesn't mean anything Bill it's about the partaking it's so nice to win um I've been told to speak on behalf unless you you guys do you want to say something I'm sorry there were only three of us here there were actually 249 um, members of the crown cast but we couldn't all come here and we're all working like tomorrow so we're leaving in about five minutes but thank you so much um Obviously, um, we're all here because of other people's really good work. Let's, I think it would be nice to, to thank Nina Gold, who cast us. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we wouldn't be any, uh, anywhere without the words. So Morgan, and thank you for his genius. And um, Left Bank, Netflix. It's the most fun job, and I'm amazed that we get a prize for on top of the, the funness of doing it. And it's our privilege to be in this great show. I've had the time of my life. I think we all have. And it's really as good as it, as it gets, this show. Um, I really recommend it if, if you want a, another job. It's amazing how well produced this thing is. And it's because of Suzanne Mackey and Andy Harry's over there. I would thank everybody else, but they're all asleep at home, so there's not much point. And Netflix, I love you very much. Lots of love, thank you. Coming up on the Screen Actors Guild Awards, Nicole Kidman, Margot Robbie, and Charlize Theron, plus Sterling K. Brown, Denai Guerrera, Lupita Nyong'o. Please welcome Margot Robbie, Nicole Kidman, and Charlize Theron. Tonight's final nominee for Cast in a Motion Picture is a film about successful career women in an oppressive work environment. It is based on a powerful and true story that we were all so thrilled to be a part of. The film is also a reminder that you don't have to agree with a person's point of view to approach them and their story with empathy. This is Bombshell. Fox News star Gretchen Carlson dropped a major bombshell today. What is she doing? This could kill Fox News. We need everyone on Team Roger. Get it on. Put it on. These are the end times. You do understand I have to be above this, right? You know the entire country is talking about your period right now. So you're a tough guy, like you really rough guy. Sweetheart, this is an island of safety and truth. There's a man! Ready to go to war? Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Lupita Nyong'o and Danai Gurira. Excuse me. <laughs> Take your pick. The performances in this category show us men facing defining crises of their lives in vastly different circumstances. 
And while the stories are unique, each performer has found a way to connect us intimately to his subject. These men portray complex, fully realized characters, and we can't take our eyes off of them. Here are our nominees for the outstanding performance of a male actor in a television movie or limited series. Mahershala Ali, true detective. There's no certainty. A lot of the time, there's no clarity at all. You just do your best and learn to live with ambiguity. Russell Crowe, the loudest voice. Small towns across America, in Garrison, New York, in Warren, Ohio, and we must band together and stand together and vote together and take our country back. Jared Harris, Chernobyl. Why worry about something that isn't going to happen? Oh, that's perfect. They should put that on our money. Jarell Jerome, when they see us. What about being like you? We're here to answer questions. I don't want to answer questions anymore because right. answering a question what got me here in the first place. Why am I going to answer so your question? Nice. What does that have to do with my case? Huh? Sam Rockwell, Fosse Verdon. I tell you, I'd rather open that door, walk out in the street, and step in front of a bus than have an audience watch Eddie mangle that number again. I'd rather, I'd rather slip my throat. So, is that what you want? You want another number? I can get you. And the actor goes to Sam Rockwell. <laughs> Sam Rockwell celebrates his third win and sixth nomination. He won previously for his performance at three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, wow. Um, I, uh, did not expect this at all. Uh, I, uh, you think you can dance and then you meet these, uh, Fosse choreographers. Andy Blankenbuehler, Susie Meisner, Marianne Lamb, you know, I, I had some MC Hammer moves and some Tom Cruise risky business moves, but these people can really dance. As Michelle said it, they look like ordinary people, but they're really superheroes. Um, to my fellow nominees, I, uh, I, I really didn't think I'd be standing here. I, I, I share this with all of you, and uh, especially Tommy Kale and the amazing Michelle Williams, my wonder twin. Um, I can't imagine doing this with anybody else but you. Uh, my acting coach, Terry Knickerbocker, Jason, Elise Ronda, my beloved Leslie Bibb for reading scripts with me during the Christmas break. Thank you. I love you very much. Thank you very much. Please welcome Sterling K. Brown. As screen actors, we are immensely fortunate to work in a medium capable of preserving our work well beyond our time on this earth. Although their passing leaves an emptiness in our hearts, the friends and colleagues we lost this year have imparted an extraordinary legacy, performances that will continue to captivate, entertain, and inspire us for generations to come. That's what a union is, one. I don't know why I get the feeling that I'm kind of losing an old friend. Remember all the places we could have gone. We should have gone there. Whatever you decide, be confident enough in it. 
But you don't have to lie. Have you got what it takes to pull bank jobs? I ain't afraid. That's what you think. I can't believe you gave up what means the most to you for me. In the privacy of our own lives, you're doing the right thing. Walter, let me shake your hand. It's been a real pleasure to have known you. Shut your hole, you drunken donut. The real me just came shining through. <laughs> I want you to be proud of me. I'm sure as hell I'm going to miss you. Oh, I'm going to miss those laughs. All right, pal. He left a big hole there, a place where there used to be something. All those moments will be lost like tears in rain. What am I doing this? I make up my mind. That's it. When you once love somebody, you always love them. You've no idea what it means to love someone enough to let them go. You win some, you lose some. But you live to fight another day. Our love, care, devotion, that's what really counts, isn't it? Things can be the way they were. I know it. I just know it. You ever want to be somebody else? Never wanted to be anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Glenn Close. No matter how large a character looms or, momenta, uh, how, or how momentous their situation, a powerful performance comes down to the most minute details. A gesture, a pause, a twinkle in the eye. The gentlemen in this category have brought us five extraordinary examples of how an actor can inhabit a role right down to the cellular level. Here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Leading Role. Christian Bale, Ford versus Ferrari. Look out there. Out there is the perfect lap. No mistakes. Every gear change, every corner. Perfect. Leonardo DiCaprio, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Most important thing in this town is when you're making money, you buy a house in town. You don't rent. Eddie O'Brien taught me that. Hollywood real estate means you live here. You're not just visiting, not just passing through. You live here. Adam Driver, Marriage Story. If we give on L.A. right now, and then try to make the best deal possible, I think we can get her to give on other fronts. There are no other fronts. This is the thing. He needs to know that I fought for him. Taron Edgerton, Rocket Man. The problem is you have never understood me and what I have to go through. And you know what? I should have sacked you when you left me. Joaquin Phoenix, Joker. And the actor goes to Joaquin Phoenix. celebrating his first win. He was previously nominated in this category for his performance in Walk the Line. Yeah. 
Hi. Um, I was here many years ago, and um, I couldn't fully appreciate it at, at the time. Um, I, I now realize how fortunate I am to be a part of this community, have such reverence for actors and, and what we do. I so feel really honored to be here. Um, I'd like to just talk about a little bit about my fellow nominees, if that's okay. Uh, when I started acting again um, and going to auditions, I'd always get to like the final callback. And I think many people know what that's like. And there would always be like two other guys that I was up against. And we'd always lose to this one kid. And um, no actor would ever say his name because it was like too much. But every casting director would whisper it now. It's Leonardo, it's Leonardo. Ah! It's, who is this Leonardo? Uh, you know, you have been an inspiration for over 25 years to me and so many people. I thank you very, very, very much. Christian, I don't know where you are. Christian, you commit to your roles in ways that I can only dream of. I, I, I just, um, you, you never turn into bad performance. It's infuriating. I wish you would. One time, just suck once. It'd be great, okay? Um, Adam, uh, I've been watching you the last few years and, and you've just been turning in these beautiful, nuanced, um, incredible, profound performances. And I, I'm just so moved by you and you were just devastating in this film um, and, and you should be here. And Taryn, where are you? I'm, I'm so happy for you wherever you are. Hey. Hey man, uh, you're so beautiful in this, in this movie and, and I'm, I'm so happy for you and, and I can't wait to see what else you do. Um, and uh, really I'm standing here on the, the shoulders um, of my favorite actor, uh, Heath Ledger. So thank you and good night. And now, Tom Hanks. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all witnessing history here tonight. We've looked it up, we've checked the facts, and this year marks the very first time ever that an award category has featured Judy Garland, Harriet Tubman, and Megyn Kelly. It was often two out of three, Harriet wouldn't be there, Megan might not be there. Judy was the only sure thing. Now those iconic women, as well as the fictional but no less real characters of Nicole Barber and Adelaide Wilson are portrayed by these gifted actors, the nominees for outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role are. Cynthia Erivo, Harriet. You tried to destroy my family, but you can't. Try to destroy my people, but you won't. God has shown me the future, and my people are free. My people are free. Scarlett Johansson, Marriage Story. I just became who? Oh, you know, the actress that was in that thing that time, and, and he was the draw. And that. Would have been fine, but I got smaller. Lupita Nyong'o, Us. What do you want? What? Charlize Theron, bombshell. He is going to be the Republican candidate for president. I'm I a news understand. anchor, I need access to him. You need access, at what price? At what price? The price of our apartment, my salary. <laughs> Renee Zellweger, Judy. Somewhere over the rainbow.
And the actor goes to Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger celebrates her fourth win and sixth nomination. She previously won for her performances in Cold Mountain and Chicago. family. <laughs> what an honor. What an honor uh, from my actor family. Thank you so much for this. Um, and, uh, and thank you for inviting me here alongside my extraordinary sisters whose work touches me so deeply. I celebrate y'all whenever you come out with anything with the popcorn breakfast at the theater. And it's my, it's my great honor to be here tonight alongside y'all. And um, I'm just so grateful and for the privilege of reflecting on the life of one of our own and most beloved. Um, I have to thank my fellow actors, the gifted Jesse Buckley and Finn Whitrock, Rufus Sewell, Darcy and Bella and Andy and Royce and Lewin and Dan and Jody. Sharing the celebration of Judy Garland's legacy will always be one of my greatest life blessings. And if I could squeeze in a thank you to Helen Cates from Texas, thank you for sharing early days with me and let me sleep on your couch. I still look up to you, Tom Cruise, for your example of professionalism on set and striving for excellence and uh, generosity and unconditional kindness. And Vincent D'Onofrio, thank you for showing me how to work and the seriousness of work so that it can matter more. And to this community, y'all have taught me so much along the way, and I'm so grateful to you, especially to my sisters. Your example inspires me. I feel so lucky to be a member of this family of storytellers who gets to do work that reflects the experience of being human and fosters understanding and empathy and unity. And with some luck, maybe pushes history a little bit closer to the light. Um, Judy Garland, uh, 50 years later, your community is thinking of you tonight. This is for you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. When the Screen Actors Guild Awards continue, Eugene and Dan Levy present the award for outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture. Once again, please welcome Eugene and Dan Levy. We are back to close out the show this evening. Again, not your host. We are still not your host. No. Uh, here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Cast in a Motion Picture. Bombshell. Sweetheart, this is an island of safety and truth. There's a man! Ready to go to war? Oh, yeah. The Irishman. Would you like to be a part of history? Yes, I would. Big business and the government are working together, trying to pull us apart. Something's got to be done. I know things they don't know I know. Jojo Rabbit. I don't think I can do this. Of course you can. Ten-year-old shouldn't be celebrating war and talking politics. She doesn't seem like a bad person. You're not a Nazi, Jojo. You're a ten-year-old kid who wants to be part of a club. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm Rick Dalton. That's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. Are you a good friend? I try. I'm Sharon Tate. I'm in the movie. In this town, I can all change like that. Hamilton. 
parasite. And the actor goes to Parasite. The cast of Parasite celebrates the collaboration of 10 actors in its cast. With its win tonight, Parasite becomes the first foreign language film in the history of SAG Awards to win this award. Thank you so much. Uh, great honor. A uh, great honor. 그 기생충이라는 영화는 이제 제목 기생충인데 사실은 이제 영화 내용 보셔서 아시겠지만 우리가 어떻게 어떻게 살아가면 좋을까라는 공생에 관한 영화라고 생각합니다. Although Parasite, the title is Parasite, I think the story is about coexistence and how we can all live together. 그래서 음, yeah, thank you. 근데 이렇게 상징적으로 그리고 정말 의미가 있는 앙상블의 최고의 상을 받으니까 우리가 영화를 잘못 만들지는 않았구나라는 생각이 듭니다. 예. But to be honored with the best ensemble award, it occurs to me that maybe we haven't created such a bad movie. 어, 어, 오늘 이렇게 존경하는 어, 대배우님들 어, 앞에서 이렇게 큰 상을 받게서 너무 영광스럽고 오늘의 이 아름다운 기억을 영원히 기억하겠습니다. 대단히 감사합니다. I am so honored to receive this award in front of such amazing actors that I admire. I will never forget this beautiful night. Thank you so much. the show folks congratulations to all the winners good night everybody good night united is a proud sponsor of the 26th annual screen actors guild awards